Hey everyone, this is Tracy with Color Me This. I am now on episode 254. It is the afternoon. It just started pouring down rain. I heard some grumbles of thunder in the background. It's a little bit dark in here. So it is a perfect time to sit down and color. I had to run out and do some errands this morning in between doing the flip through. My parents' vehicles that were shipped three weeks ago now, uh, they are arriving Monday, so I had to go to the storage units, and I was hoping that they would be here when the vehicles arrived, but they won't. Uh, the cars will be ahead of them by a couple of days. So that's all taken care of. I've had some lunch. I'm ready to sit down and tackle this last circle of flowers, and it is going to be, I predict, my most challenging. Uh, but we shall see. So we have what I'm calling the poinsettia circle. I did not even see these funky pinwheel type flowers. So I've had to come up with a game plan for those. And then I want to share with you my colors. The pencils we are working with today are the very beautiful, natural, earthy, Derwent Lightfast. Uh, the color, the colors are all Lightfast, LF1 and LF2, which means we do not get our bright pink. I did not think we would have a bright pink, and we do not. So, I did make a little swatch to go along with the existing swatch that I already had. So above here LF is the light fast and I did my my five color blend and you will see that the there's really two holes not just one. First there's no hot pink. I already knew that that would be the case. I picked the closest to hot pink. These pencils have no numbers. They only have names. So in the in the end of the video, I will do a picture of all of them. I see here, I have about three extras. So I have literally the same number. I picked no extra colors, even though I have three extra because I was hadn't decided between a couple of them. Uh, I had a darker color called apricot and I had to shift to a lighter color because this dusty pink is what this is called and it is too dusty to go well with the apricot. So I will be telling you the names of each of them as I bring them out to use them. Uh, then we have two greens. They're very close. One is more of a forest green called um, racing green and then one is a bluer green called pine green and then the lightest green that I could get is that light green there and it's still very earthy compared to the other palettes so the leaves I predict will look different however on a good note I matched the brown perfectly and I matched the purple the light lavender color I didn't have to go into say a blue or a heather so there is our lighter and there's our darker purple that looks just like a grape. It's a little bit darker than the uh, dark purples of the others. So I just think it will look different for two reasons. Number one, we don't have our hot pink. And number two, we have a very unique set of flowers and I'm going to be challenged to make it look like the other three. But I think what I came up with will still end up looking nice. I will probably, if I can remember to refrain, I will not move the camera up at the end of today. There's the big thunder. Lots of thunder. You guys might hear this today. Um, so tomorrow at the review is when we will do the reveal of all of the flowers. Now you can see a little bit of this one over here and that's fine. So it will still be fun regardless. So one of the things I noticed, these, these are very soft. And when they're soft, it's hard to get that the color to go deep right away. So the way you combat that, if you want to get your colors 
to go deep into very small spaces and look how tiny some of these areas are. So I am going to keep my pencils razor sharp. The tip has to be sharp. My sharpener is right here. Oh, well, I saw that lightning. Let's see how loud that is. There you go, the whole house shook. All right, nothing, there's nothing better than coloring and I'm staring out my windows and it's just like somebody turned the water faucet on outside each of the windows, just gushing. This is my happy place. All right, so we have our super sharp tip. These tips do not stay sharp. They are not a, a hard pencil at all. And they also are the ones that I don't like the clicky, sticky feeling. Um, I will share, if I remember, uh, one of the colors I avoided, I did not choose it, was because of its especially sticky nature. There are a couple of colors that will stick on you and make these dark patches. I've actually seen some other people having the same issue. I am hoping by going with a very sharp point that any of these that have the tendency to do that I will avoid. So this bare, big air swath of green that goes into this pinwheel actually does not... Oh, we're gonna have another thunder. Mm, that was on the other side of the house. So I have to stop... Oh, wow. Stop my green right here. I don't want it to go out on the outside of the circle. So I'm gonna just make an artificial little barrier I will pretend this leaf and this flower petal uh, overlap, even though they don't. So with my interesting idea for this weird flower, I just love Joanna Basford's mind. It, it just, what's going on in there, she just has a very, uh, clever way to keep things varied and to keep us challenged as colorists because this is just not a normal thing that you would have to color. All right, so I have to be careful. I am not going outside these lines. I will probably not do all of the greens either. So I have the same exact, this, this area here goes into this flower and meanders all around and then out here it does not have a an end point, but I have to color this flower. So I am, and then right here I have a nice stopping point. I'm going to actually fill that in so that my brain does not have to think. My brain will assume that that's the stopping point. So let's, I have these little closed areas, two of them. So I think what I will do with you guys is work through the logistics here of my coverage. I'm going to have to go to about here. Yeah, of my professional pencils, these are the ones I like the least. I wish they were just a touch more silky. And I wish they were the teeniest bit more firm so that the tip will stay, would stay um, consistent for longer. So there's the outside of that edge. Uh, this is going to stay open. So these three little leaflets, I'm just going to leave. And I am not going to put any green here. I am going to have no problem with these areas up here. They're all normal. I can go to right here. I'm going to have to make an arbitrary closing gap right here. We'll just say that those are connected, but they're not. 
and I believe that that takes care of all of the green exterior areas. They're all closed off. Okay, so I want to work on these silly flowers. I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to hope, hope, hope that I can replicate this. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm trying to get all of my videoing, uh, extra curricular videos done before my parents arrive. They are definitely going to be eating up some of my time when they first get here. And so I did my haul for September early, split it into two parts, finished that, got the flip through done. the R.J. Hampson new book and so this right here is the pine which is the bluer green I have to soften this as it goes into the flower I am transitioning to what's called racing green which is a bit of it's dark but it is a green blue green uh, so I have the second half of my Prismacolor to Star Joy Conversion, which is the uh, Star Joy matchup to the Prismacolors. I've already done the Prismacolor matchup to the Star Joys, and it is much more difficult to try to uh, flesh out 150 pencils with. You know, I've got the tight conversions all done because I took those off of the other one. Uh, but now I'm doing it the flip and I have to fill in the gaps. So my, I guess there are, and the analytical mind in me wants to mark the perfect matches versus the, you know, once or one or two shade removed matches and then leave blank with there's just no, no color like it. Uh, in the Star Joy. So that's what I'm working on now is I'm working on the the next tier removed. Uh, so hopefully my parents are going to arrive, I think I have five days till they get here. And I'm slowly working on, they're going to move into our trailer. It hasn't been lived in. It was completely empty and ready to be sold. When in April they all of a sudden went we are going to sell everything and move there and we didn't know what to th think about that that was pretty crazy that that they did that which i think is great my mom is having her health issues and it was a lot of stress on her husband uh, to help deal with this all and this all happened during covid it was just a mess so i'm like mom if you want me to help I would be more than happy to help. I am the only child, by the way. Uh, but you have to be closer. I am not moving back to Washington State. I fled the state. I don't want to be cold. My body can't handle it. And boom, next thing you know, she's coming here. I can't believe we're now at the other side of summer. And she is on her way. They're actually in Nebraska today. So this was a little bit of that racing green that I was... Um, saying is a little more green rather than the blue and now we're gonna see what happens with my vision I have another thing of lightning we're gonna have thunder in a second let's see if it's close or far away again this time I am because I want to see what this is gonna look like uh, I am NOT going heavy pressure this is light 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 in case I need to work on a transition there's that long rolling thunder. So in about five days, they're going to be here. Uh, they're in Nebraska. They are staying in Lincoln, Nebraska. There's a, I guess, I thought it was a racetrack, a famous racetrack, but it's actually a famous racing, car racing museum. And it is not open tomorrow, so they needed to hurry up and get there so that my mom's husband could uh, go and visit it sadly they've got a 95 pound dog who has spent most if not almost all yeah all of its life 
on a farm roaming free on five acres. Free reign, kingdom of his, king of his domain. And so he is in the car with them, making the move here. And it is very hard on him. So my mom will hang out with him today. So they should be there now. She hasn't responded to the last couple of texts. So I will would like to assume that they are in place. Boy, the lightning is just right here. So that is my vision for interpreting these spiky flowers. I will not do the second one. I, I'm going to do what I've been doing, which is fill in all of the bigger elements and then see how much time I have left. So I have my blend. It's the five color blend. Uh, we go, these are, by the way, a very large diameter, heavy pencil. They, in my Lazy Susan, they don't fit. Uh, you can't put multiples in, like the Brit Funers, you could put two per little rectangle spot. Uh, not so with these, which means everything is spread out more. So let's see how well I do. And this is where I'm going to take a photo of the uh, colors. And I will group them like this is the five color blend. Uh, you should recognize that. But I'll try to group the pencils together in the ones that kind of work together. So we have sun yellow to amber gold, dusky pink, magenta, and deep rose. The only color that is a bit of a challenge is this dusky pink. It's a little bit too gray for my liking because I wanted to make this these colorful. So let's see how well, if I try really hard to hold all of them in my hand, I have determined a th set of three larger uh, ones that are going, well, two big ones. So. I only have one, two, three largest flowers. I have decided that I want across this one and this one are going to be the main blend. Then I have the purples I want to do with threesome. I'm thinking, uh, so I think my three, either this one, yeah, the upper one, the lower one on the other side, either side of this are going to be purple. And then one of these will be purple, probably this one. And then, no, this one will be the, the pink, yellow to pink. Uh, so I'm just going to execute. I'm probably not stating very clearly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to, I don't, know if my thing is staying focused perfectly. I am closer. When I did the flip through today of the R.J. Hampson book, Mountain King, I noticed that I had to shift around my camera on its tripod a little bit different than it's set up normally. So I have decided that the second layer here, these are all going to be the pink. Any one of these, like these two, I could make be leaves. Um, over here, this one could be a leaf and that one a leaf, that's definitely a leaf. So, so I can kind of pick and choose And that's a leaf right there. Because of the trickiness of the leaves, I am going to color block with the lightest green some leaves so that I don't accidentally make them not leaves. That one's an easy one because of the shape. And I think for balance, this one, I'm also going to make a leaf. Okay. I am going to jump ahead because while I'm at it and I have the green, if I get my greens blocked in better, I won't accidentally mm. 
make them not leaves. I only want three leaves on this one as well. I think I'm gonna make this one a leaf. Again, very light pressure so that I am not necessarily uh, totally committed. Now this one's interesting. Four teeny tiny leaves that aren't really uh, set up as the same enough shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and block those in. Uh, whoop. I see more lightning. Now we have one large leaf that has no leaves. This is a leaf. just afraid if I don't get these blocked in. By the way, on my mock-up, they don't have any color. I, ha I had not committed them. So a couple of them, I actually had made them, uh, and I don't like them. And then others, I did not color at all. So then we have, I already said this one was for sure a leaf. And that looks like a leaf to me. And that looks like a leaf to me. This guy is standing out all by himself. I could make it a leaf because I made... Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead. This one will have four leaves. Nothing... I tend to like odd numbers more than even numbers. Okay, so this one. This big... The biggest one. I know that that is a leaf because it it is part of this interesting little leaflet and I'm gonna make those all the light color okay that's a leaf it's tough because everyone this looks like a true poinsettia with the multiple layers I am going to just leave it and I'm going to make the whole thing. That'll be my focal flower. Okay. Back to the coloring of this smaller one. I should have started with the biggest one, but I will be getting over to it here shortly. Uh, with these, I am using on the petals light pressure especially this middle tone because I am going to take the pink I started out my blend a little different uh, this dark the amber gold is what I have going right into the center then I have the lighter yellow that I did very light pressure sun yellow the other color option by the way is banana and both of them are very close light yellows. Now we're going to go with the dusky pink. This is the one where things get interesting. Uh, I would like for this to be transitioning as I layer the yellow and this dusky pink. I'm shooting for that mango uh, light orange color. I'm wanting to leave a lot of tooth for the two darker red pinks to grab onto. Deep Rose is the darkest. Let's see if I've got the lighter one. Here we go, Magenta. So this is the one that's too bright. I didn't have a hot pink for the Erogitin, I think, had didn't go bright enough. It was the hot pink that I didn't have. Okay, I'm going to sharpen this, even though it looked, probably looked pretty sharp. I want to be very, very careful. Soft. Oh, these colors are very vibrant, by the way. You probably haven't noticed the vibrancy yet. Uh, but I want to build up as much as I can, even though these aren't necessarily a layering pencil. They would love to just smoosh on down there and do their sticky, clicky sound thing that I'm trying to avoid to keep a nice, clean transition. 
These are ones that if you do use too much pressure, you can get some strange lines that have to be worked out like uh, by erasing, adding, erasing, adding till you get the pressure just right. I am trying to avoid all that. So now we're doing the dar darkest. So this is deep rose. I did have a darker color I could have chosen. And I went to, because the color is already very vibrant, uh, it is the Bordeaux and I did not opt for that. It's one of my three extras in the middle here that I decided I would not need to use. So I can use the dusky pink for my burnisher when I get to the point where I'm ready to commit all of this to paper. I hope that the dusky pink will lighten up some of these colors. These two darkest colors are quite dark. Okay, so that's what I have there. I'm going to find my pink, right there, dusky pink. Now we're going to brighten it all up, and I will tell you I'm brightening this thing up with medium pressure. They are very, very pigmented, and they happily co-mingle with each other and make a brand new color. You can see this orange I am creating by adding this over the top. Trying not to overlap the very ends because I want the ends to stay very pink. All right, so that's one flower done. Moving on to the big flower here. I hope my knuckle does not get in the way. I am starting with the darker yellow. Our darker yellow is the autumn gold. Oh, sorry, amber gold. Notice I am avoiding the teeny tiny little triangles. I plan on taking even this one had a little little bits. The smaller ones don't, but these big ones do have gaps and I plan on making those the dark green that is the background green color which is the bluer green and it is the one called pine and I had already told you that I am making all of these flower petals I still think I could take three of them and make them not but I'm okay with making this an obvious focal very light pressure on the sun yellow. I was so impressed that this 100 set had the right uh, light bluish lavender. I already knew it wasn't going to have the hot pink, but I did not think it would have the blue lavender. A layer of the pink, dusky pink, very lightly. Leaving some tooth, because I need to get the two dark pinks. This is the darkest. Nope, deep rose is not the darkest. Yes, it is. Magenta. There we go. Lighter. Since this is a large enough petal, still very small, I can go and make things a little more interesting. I 
can't believe another week has gone by. Time is just going so fast. is crazy. Like I can't even believe that we have lived here. I have we technically moved into Florida as our domicile using an RV park as our home address. That was August 4th, 2021. And then we had to go to the vehicle licensing and driver's licensing and then get everything shifted over to that address and we didn't buy a home here in this community we're gonna go for a layer of the dark deep rose until October 12th 2022 so we tootled all around Florida for over a year looking waiting for that perfect property to come up we fully intended when we stayed here over the summer we moved in in May 2022 and we thought for sure we would have something by the time we left and we left the end of July the one house we were trying to buy uh, was going well, offer accepted, and then boom, it all screeched to a halt. This is turning out really pretty. Uh, Medium-ish pressure, trying to stay very close to the edges. Nice dark edges, but the daughters called the agent and said that they were not allowing their father to sell the place. Now this is their second home. And sell the place for less than full price and it was way overpriced. So that place stayed listed another year till the next like 2023. And then I looked up the records and I am because I was worried like oh those people better not have paid too much money for it it's not worth it nope they paid what we offered and what was originally accepted and the daughters lost that battle all right so now I'm gonna go back again with that pink dusky pink and we are gonna blend the colors out into a beautiful transitionary orange with the tips being the hot pink. So notice my pink is no longer sharp. That is how quickly the tip, and it's a really beefy core. But we're working on such small images here that we need them to stay sharp. And our home that we ended up with actually is in the dream location uh, and we had already left when we got the information about this property and we purchased it before it was even listed that's how this community works as an outsider I watched the real estate here for four years actually longer than that. yeah 2018 um, and I knew there had to be some connection that if you get here and you meet the realtors and you get in with a good one and they know you're serious and you want like the thing that's the unicorn to me our house is the unicorn it is very there's only 22 homes in on this trail and that's it for the entire community and there are 1625 sites not all of them are homes a lot of them I would say half of them are RV sites and the other half are homes uh, but this home is on is on the trail which is like my husband's 
it was his requirement that we be backed to, you know, some sort of, um, you know, trail system, trail land. And uh, he got his dream. Look at that flower. I think that came out fantastic. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna set, no, up. I would like to do the third one, at least rough. Um, I don't mind changing the colors a little bit. I just have to commit to my third one. I think my third one is going to be this largest. Uh, we're just going to do a quick so that we can see it. And then I'm going to move on to blue. Alright, I have to pause. My husband is, he has his new phone. <laughs> he must be awake now. Uh, we're at 36 minutes. I'm going to respond to him and tell him that I did receive his text. And then I'll also tell him I have about 10 minutes left. So he knows what the schedule is. So I will be right back. All right, I'm going to work on, finish the smaller flower. I'm making it a little different. It is going to actually have just the darker pink, deep rose edges and go right into the yellow orange. I'm going to sneeze. It's going to pass. <laughs> All right, had to get hub settled. So I'm just blocking in, not going to finalize this one. I just want to see the balance. All right, so I am going to grab the blues now, which are right here. Two of them, it's actually a violet, blue violet and mid ultramarine are the two colors. They are a very close match. And I've already designated uh, this is going to be blue, this is going to be blue, and then one of these other three will be blue. And I think I'm going to leave it at three. Starting with the darkest, but not using too heavy of pressure. Darkest is going to be at the center with the lighter color at the edges. The aging of the petals is what makes them lighter, is what I'm going for. And then the petals that are underneath, these will have more dark. There's four of them that are underneath. And then these four upper ones I want to soften. And of course, vary the amount and the lines. Something like that. Oh, and then these in the background. I only picked three of them to be green. Now we're coming in with the mid ultramarine. I am using medium burnish type pressure to blend these two together nicely. So the pigments for these, uh, being, being that they are light fast, uh, they're, it's not like 
I don't know, this is only my sense too, this isn't necessarily the way it is, but I believe to get the light fastness, the materials have to vary, and I do feel a difference in how certain colors feel. This blue, for instance, is quite smooth and does not have the stickiness, uh, so it may be just a function of the materials that make up this blue color give it a really nice nice feel it, the feel is almost like a luminance the luminance are less sticky than these yeah that's very nice love that okay so far that has felt the best with these I'm going back to the dark and this one here is also going to be a purple. So when you put your veining lines in the direction of these petals for both the how you would do leaf petals and this. Don't forget to make very soft pressure areas so that you can do a nice blend in with your next color. So you don't want all lines, I guess is the, what I'm trying to say. Uh, the other aspect of this that I haven't mentioned I am holding the page sideways, so the book other, it's like up, and so I, I've been telling you this on each, this is the bottom, so you are going to see me come through and make the shadows underneath darker on this side. I have not got to the point of thinking about shadows yet. The third, I'm just going to go ahead and pick one of these to be the dark, and I think I'm going to pick this five petal. Looks a little different than the poinsettia type petals. It's the same petal shape, but not as many, and the petals are fatter. And I'm going ahead and adding a few little lines. To make it interesting. Now we will come in with the mid ultramarine. This is blue violet, the dark purple. And I am going more vertically, but I am medium pressure intending to blend these two colors together. And I am, I'm kind of going on one side, have medium pressure, medium to heavy, and then the other side, leaving that middle petal line that actually uh, Joanna Basford drew in. I am kind of honoring that and leaving that dark vein there. I use whatever I can glean from the art. Oops, and that's what happens. These are a soft enough lead. Like I said, they're, they're not a firm lead. And so if you use too much pressure, and for me, I'm not even, I, I don't use a lot of pressure. So the fact that I was able to do that using what I would consider medium pressure, these are a fairly soft pencil. All right, there's our two of our three. This is way darker than this one. I don't want them to be 100% matchy-matchy, as they would not be in real life. 
in nature. This one, I am, uh, it's a fatter leaf, so I'm doing my medium pressure. Of course, now I've lost my tip and I'm okay. I don't feel like I have to sharpen it. It is my burnisher, so it doesn't really serve the purpose of needing to do tiny dark lines like the darks are. And that actually gives it a nice different look than the other flowers. I'm just darkening this up a little bit. Okay, we're gonna change colors now. Boom. I'd like to pop in with the, uh, we're, uh, we are about out of time. So let me find my brown. The brown is sepia red. I am focusing on what will be the bottom, which is actually to the left. There are lots of larger floral centers. I'm using very light pressure right now. Here's what happens if I come back and I want to add a shadow, but I don't wanna get a darker brown. I am just adding more pressure and I am making sure that I'm using the pointy part of this tip. If I did not feel that this tip was pointy enough, I would sharpen it. There, hopefully I've given you like the kind of the 3D, how to get that 3D look with, oh, and then that one, yeah, yeah, these are definitely, um, don't like pressure, because that was high, that was hard pressure. All right, so now I've lost my tip. We're going to see if I can still replicate. Not all of these have to be this brown color, I'm going to come in with a little bit of the orange. Just to give it some interest. Mixing in the colors. Making some very simple ones. I'm going to now grab a couple of my five color blend colors. I would like uh, this to be yellow. I would like uh, this to be yellow light. I really want to make a peach one. Uh, I've been able to do like a combo color. So I've got my dusky rose. I have my uh, amber gold, dusky pink, sorry, not dusky rose. And I'm going to see what I can do here to make this a, a peach. And I will finish it off with a little bit of the magenta, which is the lighter of the bright pinks. And I am leaving quite a bit of the flower white. Let's grab the magenta. And I will burnish this all together and hope that the dusky pink does a nice job of making this magenta an orange. Let's just check it out. All right, so I've got my base and now I'm gonna be really careful with my pressure because I'd like to not break another tip. So hopefully you're seeing what happens when I'm mixing these, and then this is my final burnishing coat, which isn't the yellow, and it isn't the magenta, it is dusky pink, kind of even a peachy pink. And that right there is a wonderful flower. 
So that right there is what these are really good at. You can make new colors and blend them together nicely. Okay, so I've got a very white yellow. Um, and we are going to have to call it here very soon. I think this one needs to be lighter as well. I want to darken this one a little bit. All right, uh, that's all I'm going to get for this one. Uh, these are a slower pencil. They're a lot more difficult to work with. You saw broken tips. And so I will be finishing this off on my own. You've seen what I'm going to do to this other funky flower. Uh, so I've demonstrated all of the flowers. I did not demonstrate the dark in the greens. I just blocked the green. And I did not show you the racing green is, the, is going to be the shadow green. So as I finish, I will uh, do some of the darker green for you. Uh, so tomorrow is the weekly review. We will go over what I colored this week, any whips I'm working on, as well as uh, website statistics. Again, to keep things real for me and um, make me do my homework. So do all the YouTube things like share, comment, and consider subscribing. And I will see you here tomorrow for a quick weekly review.